Welcome to Ninja Scout News and Information. We are on location today at the AESC trade show in downtown Fort Worth. More news to come. Oil prices are falling harder than Kimbo Slice this week, dropping to $88 a barrel. That's the lowest they've been since February. The prices are dropping on concerns that global economic growth is going to slow and reduce the demand for fuel. The International Monetary Fund has said that the U.S. could enter a recession, and some economic forecasts are already predicting an economic stall in the fourth quarter. The stock market took a nosedive as well. The Dow Jones fell below 10,000 for the first time in four years. The S&P 500 tumbled 42.34 points. Oil and gas giants weren't exempt from the troubles. BP saw its shares slide more than 8%, and Shell lost more than 7%. That's the biggest drop either his company has seen in many years. Chevron dropped more than 3%, while ConocoPhillips fell about 2%. And now let's take a look at some mergers and acquisitions. Legacy Reserves Operating has finished its $41.7 million acquisition of Pantwist from Kano Petroleum. KBR has acquired Wabi Development Corp. for $19.5 million. Forest Oil has completed its acquisition of producing assets in Texas and Louisiana from Cordarela, Texas. I have with me Kenny Jordan, the director of the AESC. Mr. Jordan, thank you for joining us. Thank you. We're Tell us, us. My pleasure. Tell us real quick the mission and purpose of the AESC and what you guys are hoping to accomplish sure. here this week. Our association was formed in 1956. We're uh, well servicing contractors includes rigs, service rigs, wireline. Uh, this is particular convention is our health safety environmental uh, committee meeting where we bring a lot of safety professionals. We have a lot of safety talks and presentations coming in. So we've got a good group from across the U.S., a little over 200 attendees here. And uh, we'll be talking specific safety issues all week. Now with the face of energy changing constantly, the prices of oil on a roller coaster ride and alternative energies coming on the market. How is that affecting y'all's strategy and approaching the energy industry? Well, from an energy for us, from a trade association standpoint, we're strictly focused on oil and gas. Uh, I think it puts more of an emphasis on our association from an oil and gas standpoint from a safety perspective because we have so many new rigs, so many new employees that are coming into this business, it's important for us to get that information out to the new employees and to get the training and those those issues to those people that allow them to do work safely in the workplace. OPEC President Shaqib Khalil says oil prices will continue to fall this year. Khalil said OPEC will take appropriate measures in the next meeting to preserve stability in the international market. The organization will discuss production levels for the first quarter of 2009 at a meeting in December in Algeria. Iran oil minister Ghulam Hussein Nazari says this is unacceptable that $100 and below is not suitable for oil producers or oil consumers. Producers are pumping out nearly 400,000 barrels a day too much right now, he says. If OPEC nations don't respect the organization's target, he says the oversupply will only grow worse. And now let's take a look at some people on the move. John Michael Rao and Scott D. Urban have been appointed to the Pioneer Drilling Company Board of Directors. FMC Technologies President and CEO Peter Den Kinnear has been named Chairman of the company's Board of Directors. Motiva Enterprises has named Bob Pease as President and Chief Executive Officer. The Energy and Environmental Research Center at the University of North Dakota has achieved a major milestone in creating a renewable jet fuel. The project could help provide energy security to the U.S. military as well as the rest of the country. The process can be tailored to produce a wide range of aviation and automotive fuel that's identical to fuels derived from petroleum. Tyson Foods and Centroleum Corp are building a plant near Baton Rouge to make diesel fuel and jet fuel from animal fat and grease. Dynamic fuels will produce, use non-grade animal fats produced by Tyson. That may include beef, tallow, pork, lard, chicken fat, and greases. It's scheduled to begin production in 2010 and will have a total capacity of 75 million gallons a year. Turning to solar energy, U.S. researchers have found a way to make new, efficient silicon-based solar cells. The cells are flexible enough to be wrapped around a pencil and so transparent they could be used to tint windows. The technology has been licensed to Simperius in North Carolina. And that's all for Energy Scout News and Information today. Thank you for joining us. We will see you tomorrow.